Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall. I'm here today with Prophet Jermaine Green. Now, Jermaine, among other things, is the chaplain of the NBA Chicago Bulls. Jermaine, you're also known as the wheelchair miracle preacher because you had a time where you were paralyzed on your left side of your body, stuck in a wheelchair, but you kept ministering, you kept preaching. And it was over two years, and then you were finally able to just walk out of that wheelchair, miraculously healed. But, but Jermaine, there's so many people, so many believers watching us right now, that they've been praying and believing for healing, maybe for years, and they're just not seeing an answer. They're not seeing a breakthrough. And, and in a little bit, I want to turn you loose to pray over them. But first, let's talk about the connection between the demonic demons and healing and sickness. Yeah, so the demonic definitely is where sickness comes from. I believe that you know, Christ, um, he is our healer, so he's, he's the one that brings the answer uh, concerning uh, sickness and disease. And when people understand that this is a spiritual warfare, I think that that's when we'll start to get into a place to where we're able to figure out that I have to fight from a place in the spirit. Um, when you realize that you have to fight from a place in the spirit, it puts you in a place to be able to now war in the spirit. Mm. We have to be able to war in the spirit because uh, the enemy has already released an attack. And I'm going to be honest with you, sicknesses, one of the entryways of sicknesses and disease comes from bloodlines, comes mm. from even generations before you got here, mm. which is why it's so important that you have to get into a place of spiritual warfare so that Holy Spirit can reveal to you maybe the weapons that you need to use. Um, words are very important when it comes to spiritual warfare and uh, sickness because you have to get to the root of it. Uh, it's not your job, but the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. And right. I think that even going back to when I was in the wheelchair, I had to realize that I have no control over what's going on. I have to put my full trust in Holy Spirit. Mm. And when I learned that, a peace came upon me because a weight came up off my shoulders. I wasn't as stressed as I was when everything first started. And stress is also an entryway <laughs> for sickness or disease to even remain and stay. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so important for those that are sick or going through any type of disease that they understand they have to get into a place of spiritual warfare. They have to trust Holy Spirit to give them the answers. Now, are there certain demonic spirits that, that you know, cause sickness or, or hinder us getting our healing? Yes. Um, I'm so glad you asked. I actually have an example. My wife, Prophetess Margaret Green, she actually went through a sickness. Um, she had an aortic dissection. Hmm. And um, what that means is she had a tear in one of her major blood arteries. Hmm. And so this tear came out of nowhere. Hmm. The doctors were you know, trying to figure out how did this happen? Normally when you have this type of injury, it's really for our sickness. It comes from older people. My wife is young and vibrant. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it was baffling them. We already understood that this had to be something demonic or something that was launched against her. Not only that though, she also had multiple blood clots in her lungs. So she had two different types of diseases in her body and they came all of a sudden. Hmm. And so the first thing we had to do was recognize that this is something that the enemy has launched. And this is not something she's brought up on herself. And that's important Very that you important. recognize that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because when you recognize what's going on, then it puts you in a place to know how to pray, to know mm. what the Holy Spirit is saying about your situation. They right. told me that to, to prepare for her funeral. Oh but no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And that goes for any believer, anybody that's going through right now that's sick, that has any type of disease, understand that the Lord is going to allow you to prosper. You're going to overcome what you're facing. And so in this situation, we had to go into prayer. Mm. Um, my wife was praying all the time and she finally got a revelation from Holy Spirit. 
She was holding unforgiveness. Mm. Unforgiveness will cause sickness and disease to come into your body and remain. Mm. So Holy Spirit had to reveal to her, you've got some unforgiveness in your heart. Mm. So she had a you know, traumatic childhood. She went through a lot of things and she was holding a lot of people with her and in her heart. So Holy Spirit said, I can't really operate that the way I want to mm -hmm. until you release them. Wow. So she forgave mm -hmm. and she said immediately after she forgave, she felt something come up on her body. She knew she was healed before we even got the report. Wow. So when we went to go get the report to confirm, um, here's another obstacle that we face. They said that the, the dissection actually grew. But, but we went home, not discouraged. Yeah. She came out still believing what God had done. Notice that there's a key there. She didn't allow that news mm -hmm. to detour her from what Holy Spirit said. Mm. We got home and the next, in the following day, she got a phone call from the doctor. And the doctor said, you know, um, we don't know what happened, but we don't need to see you anymore. And so she was like, oh, my God. You know, of course, she was expecting that news. Yeah. But the doctor told her that they were looking at an old X-ray, uh. an old CAT scan. <laughs> That's where the report came from. So, so I'm saying all that to say this. You have to hold on to what Holy Spirit has said and what he's already done. You've got to remember whoever he's healed, he has no respect to person. He wants to heal you, too. So she closed that door, yes. that doorway of unforgiveness. She forgave, but then she had to go that extra step and believe what she knew in the spirit was true. And I mean, the enemy was just trying to throw one last little thing in there like, oh, see, it didn't work. Yes. And it was a lie. It was all a lie. Yes. So Jermaine, we're going to take one quick break here. And when we come back there, Jermaine has found there's a connection between the glory of God, the presence of God, and deliverance and healing. And you're gonna to wanna to experience it for yourself. Come back in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, here with Jermaine Green. And Jermaine, we were talking about, right when we went to the break, that you've seen how the glory of God, the presence of God makes such a difference when it comes to healing and deliverance. And first, let's talk about the difference between the anointing and the glory, because I think most believers or a lot of believers are very familiar with the term anointing and kind of have an idea of what it is. Maybe not so much the glory, but what's the difference between the two? I'm glad you asked that. Um, so I believe that anointing is not enough. The anointing has to do with your ability coupled with God. But glory Which is, is still a good thing. It's still a good thing. Yeah. But glory is all God. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather have the glory come <laughs> than to have to actually kind of God to, you know, depend on my ability. And it's so important to understand as believers that God's glory wants to do the work. He wants to eliminate you and put his name on top of yours. That's what glory does. Mm -hmm. Samson is a good example of an anointed man of God. And we, as you read the story, you find out his eyes got gouged out. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he's asking for God to come again and give him the ability right. to do what he was doing before. Glory, on the other hand, just requires you, a submitted believer, to show up and he'll do the rest. I like that version. <laughs> I like that version. I'm so glad you said that. You know, and the example of that would be Moses at the Red Sea. Mm. All he did was raise his hands. Mm -hmm. And when he raised his hands, the sea parted. Mm. God did the work. Well, all Moses had to do was show up. This is actually, I call it divine technology. This is the era that we're under. You're going to start seeing more people operating out of the glory of God. There are going to be meetings where God is going to do what I call hands off. Will have nothing to do with a man or a personality. Would have everything to do with him. 
He's going to take full control of these meetings and uh, this re these, these revivals and things that are happening in the earth. And when it happens, people's lives would never be the same. God is trying to take his rightful place uh, in the earth. And so we have to now go with the flow. So Jermaine, I'm sure you've seen that when the glory shows up, all kinds of wonderful things happen and like deliverances and healing and so on. Uh, but first, how, how do you get the glory to show up? And, and, you know, it might be different in a meeting than, you know, the viewer. They might be by themselves or just with their family. How do you get the glory to show up? Well, I'll tell you what, the key to the glory of God is intimacy with Him, mm -hmm. doing prayer and also being Spirit-led. Um, the Holy Spirit wants to invade your space if you will allow Him to. Mm -hmm. um, when we allow Holy Spirit to come into our lives and we get comfortable with Holy Spirit leading us, the glory is sure to follow because the glory wants to know, are you going to hinder me mm -hmm. or are you going to allow me to do what I do? Mm -hmm. So you're going to experience the glory of God by yourself first. What do I mean by that? As the Spirit of God is leading you in prayer, uh, leading you to, to worship, leading you into different things, you don't even know at that point in time, the glory of God is inching and slowly creeping into your life because the glory is trying to make sure that when it's time for me to show up, you're not going to show out. <laughs> you're going to allow me to do what I do best, and that is release signs, miracles, and wonders. Now, let's talk about when you're in a meeting and the glory shows up. How, what have you seen in the area of deliverance, in the area of healing when that happens? Miracle signs and wonders right away. Um, there was a meeting that we were in not too long ago. It was actually a three-day revival, and a woman who was blind, her eyes opened up, mm. and she was able to see. Um, there are countless miracles that we have encountered. A lady's ankle was broken and uh, the glory cloud appeared actually in the church. It began to descend. We could actually see a fog or mist in the building. Whenever you see the fog or mist or cloud in the building, Holy Spirit is about to take over. But as soon as it descended, there was a sound in the room of one accord of worship. And when that worship went up, it, it, was, it was unbelievable to see uh, what God was doing in there as far as people crying and people really, you know, giving themselves over to the Lord. There was a woman who was uh, in the church who came in on crutches. Mm -hmm. She had just uh, broken her ankle, and I believe that she was set up for surgery. They said it, but they didn't do the surgery yet. Mm -hmm. So she was in the, in the building, and what happened was as we began to worship, she set the crutches down, she began to walk, and then she began to run. By the time the service was over, she was walking out with her crutches. So it's not like a bunch of people gathered around and laid hands on her, and it was just being in the presence, being in the glory. This is what we call divine technology, the glory <laughs> of God. No man gets the credit. It's all God. I'm a recipient of it. I got pulled out of a wheelchair. No man laid his hands on me. Hmm. The Holy Spirit or the glory of God came into the building and I got up immediately. When the glory comes in, it fixes everything. Hmm. And anything that was broken that maybe you haven't been praying about, it fixes that as well. Hmm. I have that testimony as well. I had a limp before I got into the wheelchair. When I got healed, my limp was gone <laughs> as well as the left side of my body was smaller than my right side. It was even by the time the glory got done. So you got completely restored. Got completely restored, hmm. and I'm here to tell the story now. Oh, my goodness. So, Jermaine, right before we go any further, I want you to just, 30 seconds, pray for the viewer right now to begin to experience that manifest presence of God. I want to speak to every believer right now that's watching this program. You only can give away what you have. I have allowed the glory to take complete control of my life. So we release the glory of God right now into your homes. You will begin to experience the glory like never before. Every sickness, every disease is under arrest. Every broken limb is now coming back together right now in the name of Jesus. Just lift your hands, begin to thank God, 
and do something that you couldn't do before because you are just now got healed in Jesus' name. When we come back, uh, in fact, I hope you're beginning to feel the presence of God right now. And if you're not feeling it, that's okay. Believe by faith. But when we come back, I want Prophet Germain to minister to you, to pray over you. Whatever the sickness is, the demonic attack, I want him to pray over you that it's broken, that you're healed. Come back in just a moment. God is calling forth powerful prophets to minister to His people. Find out if this is you by calling or going online at SidRoth.org to get Jermaine and Margaret Green's book, The Grace Gift of Prophecy. Keys to unlocking your prophetic gift. You'll also receive Jermaine's brand new exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Discovering and Developing Your Spiritual Gift. All yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9918. With Jermaine and Margaret's book, The Grace Gift of Prophecy. Understand how having the gift of prophecy is different from receiving the office of the prophet. Learn about the three prophetic realms and the keys to operating prophetically. Be equipped to access the prophetic voice of God through prayer. Learn how to get guidance and prophetic mentorship. Unlock your full spiritual gifting and purpose God has for you in advancing His kingdom. See how fear of failure can hinder you in developing your gift of prophecy. Realize that living a consecrated life to hear God greatly increases the power and accuracy of your prophecies. Understand the difference between prophecies that are exhortations, comforting, and edifying verses that are warnings and rebukes. Discern how some prophecies you give are for the body of Messiah, and some are only personal prophecies for individuals. Receive impartations and prayers to activate your gifts when you get your main's brand new exclusive audio CD teaching series, Discovering and Developing Your Spiritual Gift. You will learn how to pray and how to hear the voice of God for yourself. Receive practical guidelines and activation to operate your prophetic gifting. Discover and develop the spiritual gift God has given you. Remove blockages that prevent you from hearing the voice of God. Distinguish between the gifts of prophecy, discernment, words of knowledge, and words of wisdom. Be equipped in spirit-led prayer that is foundational for developing the gift God has given you. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Jermaine and Margaret Green's book, The Grace Gift of Prophecy. Keys to unlocking your prophetic gift. You'll also receive Jermaine's brand new exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Discovering and Developing Your Spiritual Gift. All your for a donation of $29, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9918 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9918. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Bob Duvall here with Prophet Jermaine Green. And Jermaine, before I have you minister, pray over the viewer, I think it's important to know that you yourself dealt with a demonic attack and got free of it. Tell, tell me what happened. Yeah, so I was away at school and um, I was actually running from my call. I knew God was trying to call me to ministry. Um, and, and you're a preacher's kid. Yeah, I'm a preacher's okay. kid. PK, PK kid, you know, we have the reputation. Yeah, well, that, yes. I'm one too. So. <laughs> okay, so you understand. Um, but I, I saw pretty much ministry and I didn't want any part of it. And so um, away at school, I started to, you know, live a different lifestyle as far as, you know, contrary to what the word teaches. And so I was uh, at a, a club and, uh, you know, I came home. The next morning I woke up, I had a little hangover. Um, and so um, I was going to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and when I looked in the mirror, my face was distorted. Mm. Uh, I had a, a, like an eye up here. Uh, my mouth was kind of turned and it scared me mm. and it put me on the floor. I was that scared. And so I curled up in the ball and I was just crying in my bathroom. I had a pet turtle at the time. He was the only person in there <laughs> trying to comfort me. But anyway, I was in this place and um, I knew something was wrong. And so uh, right away I knew what to do. I knew I needed to get back connected to church. And so I went to a service maybe a couple weeks later. And when I got to this service, there was a woman there who pointed at me. That's all she did. And when she pointed at me, 
I began to fall out of the chair and people told me that I was having like convulsions on the ground, almost like mm -hmm. a seizure, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. So um, just on the ground, I, I don't remember doing that, but I, I remember being on the ground and then I remember getting up off the ground. And when I got up off the ground, my eyes uh, you know, were completely open and clear. Everybody looked really bright. Mm. So I knew that what I had left and it wasn't there anymore. And so experiencing that put me more into the belief of the demonic right. and understanding that you can be demon possessed and not even know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, and some of our viewers might be dealing with a demonic right now. So I want to, I want to turn you loose to pray over that viewer, or prophesy over that viewer. Um, if you have any words of knowledge, Go ahead and share, but go ahead. Yes. So as he was talking, I want to talk to that woman right now who has a sickness in her stomach. Uh, this sickness that's in your stomach is causing you to be very evil towards people, meaning that you're frustrated that it's there. The Lord says that if you give your life to me right now, I'll take that sickness out of your stomach. I'll take that pain away and I'll begin. Your name is Amelia. You're, and I'll begin to change your life and take the anger out so that you're able to be peaceful. You have a big heart and the Lord wants to use you in ministry. I also want to speak to those right now uh, that can't not understand why they are stuck in the cycles that they're in. There's a demon present on uh, the habits that you've been trying to, to, to quit or stop. But the Lord said today, I'm sending my glory through the television screen to break the habit. You've been trying to do it on your own, but Holy Spirit says, I now about to take your place. And how you're going to do that is you're going to repeat after me. You're going to say, Father, I renounce this habit that I have. Take it away from me. When that happens, you may start feeling the temperature of your body change. It's just the outward sign that the Holy Spirit now is moving through you and you are now about to be free like never before. Don't allow these habits and these things that you have acquired down through the years to stop your destiny with walking with the Lord. I also want to speak to a man named George. I believe it's George Haley. The Lord says to you, George, you stay in Texas. The Lord says to you, George Haley in Texas, that what you've been praying about concerning your daughter, who's not a believer, she knows God, but she's not practicing salvation. He says, if you get on your knees right now, the glory will go to her and you're going to get a phone call that she's got delivered from the addiction that she has now taken on from being away from you. The Lord says, don't worry about it. Don't be concerned anymore. I'm lifting that sickness and I'm lifting that d disease and that habit and I'm taking it off of her right now. George, believe this. The Lord says, because of your faithfulness, I'm doing this. And he wants you to testify on how your prayers and this show has shifted her life in Jesus name. Uh, Jermaine, real quick in about a minute, Pray for the viewer who needs healing right now. Father, we thank you right now. You are the healer. Healing is the children's bread. Father, that means that it belongs to us. So we put a demand on the healing virtue of God right now. Go through this TV screen and go to every house right now and release your healing virtue. Let today be a significant day of change for those that are watching. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. Now, you may not have heard uh, your name called. That's okay. Go ahead and claim what Jermaine just prayed right now. Claim that healing for you and ask the Holy Spirit to show you if there's some demonic oppression coming against you, something in your family bloodline, and pray just as Jermaine showed you to pray, to break that off and to receive 
the healing that Jesus has already paid for for you. And join us again next time for something more.